It's the uh, second time you've seen your mini, your books adapted on the. Well, the, the second time the, the House of Cards has become a series. It, it's getting to be a habit, isn't it? I mean, a, but a delightful habit. I mean, when I wrote House of Cards 27 years ago, um, I didn't even expect to get it published, let alone for it to change my life. And for it to have changed my life then, and still to be changing it today, uh, and changing it all for the better, is just beyond, uh, beyond description. Why do you think it's so easily adaptable from the UK political environment in the 1980s to the US political environment in a contemporary well, The secret of House of Cards is, is not that it's about politics. Politics, I mean, you know, who, who's interested? I mean, nerds like me uh, are interested in politics, but most people aren't. The secret of House of Cards, it's about, it's about ambition. It's about vulnerability, it's about wickedness, it's, it's about the human character. It just happens to be set in a political background. And as we see Westminster or the White House and Washington, uh, they are incredibly rich and colourful backcloths against which to play these very personal dramas. Uh, the politics isn't important. What is important is the wonderful characterization, And that's why we are so wonderfully gifted with having Kevin Spacey and, and Robin Wright playing those two leads. Quite often these things, once they've been shown in America, tend to get picked up around the world for local versions. So are there more localised versions of House of Cards on the uh, cards? Well, uh, I, uh, I, I, wouldn't, I think that would be rather difficult for contractual reasons. Uh, I think much more important is that what we do now it has an appeal around the world and it's selling everywhere. I mean, I, I, I think there's scarcely a corner of the globe that hasn't now been touched by House of Cards and has it playing. I even, got, I even got a message from Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan is a part of the old Soviet Union. It's stuck in the middle of Central Asia. It's very poor. And they said, we're terribly poor. We can't afford it. But we have, we have stolen it off the internet. Uh, so please come to Kyrgyzstan and we will make you a hero, he said. <laughs> I, I haven't yet taken up the offer. But, and, and, and maybe next year they can work out a means of paying for it as well. But it's, it's lovely to have that sort of following. And obviously, the. House of Cards also has sort of, it's not changed it, but it's part of the factors that have changed the way entertainment is consumed, which must be an interesting point for you to be at. Uh, to, to me, it, it's a fundamental point. Um, one of the things that attracted me was not only that they were going to get Kevin Spacey and, and David Fincher to do it, but also that Netflix was going to provide a platform the like of which we had never seen before. I mean, two series, 13 hours each, committed, uh, that required a great deal of courage, as well as a fair amount of money. And, but you just knew that, that uh, uh, if it was to succeed, um, television would never be quite the same again. And for me, to be not only a, a part of a great, wonderfully creative process, but also part of an industrial revolution, which is what Netflix is, is, is incredibly exciting. Do you think something, I mean, this is the television BAFTAs, do you think something like this will continue to exist in the form it does 10 years from now? Oh, look, of, co of course we'll still have uh, great fun in whatever form it is. Uh, but the great thing about what we're doing now um, is that we're producing some of the finest quality of entertainment that there has ever been produced on television. It hasn't ended in a dumbing down of standards, far from it. The bar is being constantly raised. That's what this revolution is all about. And on that basis, we've got to look forward to some wonderful celebrations for many years to come. Marvellous. Congratulations, sir. Thanks very much. Pleasure. Thank